October 4th, 1529. Grace and peace in Christ, dear Katie. Our conference is almost ended, and we have agreed upon nearly all points. Our opponents maintain only bread and wine are present in Holy Communion, but not in his body and blood. They do admit to Christ's spiritual presence in the elements, though. The Landgrave is making efforts to unite us so that we consider each as brethren and part of the Church. We object to being brethren, yet we wish to live at peace and on good terms with them. Kiss luncheon and pension for me. Your obedient servant, Mark. P.S. Many are worried over the sweating sickness. Fifty seized yesterday. Two have died. My dearest Martin, your letter warms my heart to know that agreements have been made and that all can live peacefully in the land. You are much occupied with this work of the church, and God has gifted you to this great cause. Your countless ambitions bring true faith to many, but your sacrifice in this prevents you from enjoying a home life, to which you are also called as husband and father. I hope that you are getting your rest and eating right, even though I am not there to oversee it. If you do this for yourself, you will do well. Your calling and ministry keeps you from us too much, and we miss you dearly. You are in my constant prayers, and our children pray for you daily at the table. Thy handmaiden and Lord wife, Katie. Lord Catherine, who runs the Wittenberg household and its estate, who drives the wagon, heirs to the fields of our business venture at Zolzdorf Farm, who buys and puts cattle out to pasture, rents horses, and sells linen. I am by thy early measure your senior of 15 years. It is by a true measure my fortune to be the learner under your tutor. And as proof of your virtue, you have transformed not just a messy old monastery into a house and home, but your love has transformed a messy old monk into a Christian husband and father. I recall the blessings God has brought to me through you, my most loving wife. And again I rejoice for I remembered the birth of our son. For God in his great goodness has blessed me, ah, us, with a healthy and vigorous son, a little Luther. Glory and praise be to the Father in heaven, for he has blessed us so richly that you had an uncomplicated delivery. Our hearts are able now to rest peacefully, for our child has been baptized. What a fool I have been, but I thought I was marrying you to keep you from poverty and the life of an old maid. Your obedient and most humble subject, Mark. My dearest Martin, dear husband, you do credit me again with too much. I have need to know that you will be home soon. I must confess that in all that I undertake, I first think about how we would set out to do it together, having spoken on it and agreed to it. You are not the only one who is at times frail and in need of a caregiving spouse. You are a man who defines explaining in any simple way. In your calling, you are a fiery mastery, master excuse me, with words and reasoning, standing without wavering as you explain the mysteries of the Holy Scriptures. Yet, at home with me and our children, you are a committed husband and devoted father. Thy faithful wife and mother to thy children, Katie. Grace and peace, my dear Rib Katie, and all the little ribs, sirs and friends. There's a thicket just under my window like a small forest. 
where the crows come and go. Their screaming night and day makes me wonder why they aren't hoarse. I have not seen their emperor, but couriers prance about and all sing the same melody. They pay no heed to their castle, for it is vaulted by the beautiful canopy of heaven. Their feet rest on the fields of green carpet, and the walls of their house reach to the ends of the earth. They are independent of horses and carriages, for they have feathered wheels to travel on. So here I sit, watching the happy life of song led by the princes of Featherdom. Still, I consider our marriage and family to be a paradise beyond the lives of these small sirs, if even one lives in greatest luxury. Soon I will be home again to enjoy my family. Then I will play melodies on my lute, teach our children more songs, and instruct them on the mysteries of our most holy faith. Greet our dear Martin and Hans with his tutor, Great Aunt Lene, and all the rest. Husband and father of the household of Luther, Martin. P.S. I am annoyed at the printer's delay. I hope they will soon be ready. Martin, the children and I loved your letter. It was magnificent, and we were enraptured as we felt as if we were with you there. I have found the need to purchase another plowed field of three acres. Our prize sow you admired is now enjoyed by the many at our table. I enjoyed visits from the prince, but his emissary came instead, and I requested we take in three orphans. Their sad and dirty faces, along with their ragged clothes, told me they are in need of a loving family. Our children are growing so fast you will not be able to tell them from the rest who have become ours. Worse, your absences worry me that your own children won't remember you upon your return. Are you well? Others state you have been kept in bed by an infirmity. Thy loving wife in longing, Katie. To Catherine. Luther's wife, grace and peace in Christ, my dear Katie. The messenger is scarcely a second to wait, but I must send you a line. It is reported that our answer to the refuters will be read publicly, but they refuse us a copy of it to enable us to answer it. Since St. Lawrence's day, I have been almost well, having had no buzzing in my head, which enables me to do my writing. For until lately, I was plagued with these noises. God be with you. Amen. Pray confidently, for your prayers will be answered, and God will help you. Pray also for those who promote false teaching, for their conversion to the truth. Thy humble, Mark. I do worry a great deal about your health. You have so much running on in your mind, and the pace that you push yourself at makes even the mules tired. Have you thought more about assigning some of your work to other accomplished and faithful men? Philip is more than up to that scholarship, and a glad soul to share in these labors. Please, remember the remedies and cures I have sent to you. Use them in my absence because of your body's needs. Again. Thy servant and Lord, Katie. P.S. If you write to us a little each day or in advance of the post messenger's departure, you can <coughs> share more of your life from your extended travels. To my dearly beloved housewife at Wittenberg, grace and peace in Christ, my dear Katie. I have been meeting with bishops and princes, and we all await the emperor's decisions. Many will not consent to dissension or war, and others are indignant and try to stir up trouble. 
I wonder why Hans Weiss has not printed Psalm 117. I cannot understand who told you I was ill when you see all the books that I write. Greet all and everything. I have a lovely large sugar book for Anchen and Martin. From the wilderness, Martin. Martin, my beloved, I know you better than anyone. Your great industry and many works do not beguile me. I am sure that just as you have worked long, so also did your infirmity linger past its normal course. The true source of your irritation over the printer is not due to his sole place, for he is not slow. Your mighty speed, which outruns the king's finest steeds, is the cause of this printing logjam. Martin, take an hour daily to rest, and each week turn from your labor to take a morning or more for your leisure. I miss you intolerably. Find rest for your needs, and then find yourself home again. Your absence here delays the renovations we need to agree on for improving our home. A loving wife with and yet without husband. Katie. <laughs> To my kind and dear lady of the house, Catherine von Bora, my true love, a preacher, beer brewer and gardener, grace and peace in the Lord. Ever so right are you again, and as usual, my kind and gracious healing physician. My health has suffered more than a little. I had to recess from my endeavors, for there was a buzzing beyond that of bees in my head that kept me from further labors. I am again almost well. The weather has been so terrible that I believe it has a grudge against me. We did not risk crossing a river, and we did not wish to test God or tempt the devil who lives in the waters. Had you been there, you would have advised us not to cross. So for once, we followed your counsel. You may go ahead with the renovations to our home as you see best. For in all things I am led by the Holy Spirit, save those matters of a domestic nature. For I am led by you, my dearest companion and lover. If I can manage it before I die, I will still marry you twice, my Katie, to spite the devil. I would not exchange you, lovely Katie, for France, nor for Venice to boot, for you keep the faith and honor in our marriage relation. I commend you to God. Amen. Martin, my husband by promise and sometime by his presence. The winter has been long and the snow deep. Now as we look to spring's return, we have these floods and cold ice which backs up the streams. This is a year the stream sees itself as invited to be outside of its proper banks. But, as you have taught me, I trust solely in Christ our Savior, victor over sin, death at the grave. Not to omit master over even the icy rivers and weather. Along with our children, we are anxious for the coming of warmer days and are confident that the weather will turn fair so that you may again be with us. The children are maturing and more understanding of what God has called you to do in this great reformation of Christ's church. I am pleased that, I, that they do not fret so about your many travels. May God preserve you in all things, and may your wise discretion keep your foot on dry ground. Thy rib, Katie. Grace and peace in Christ, my dearest Katie. I hope by God's grace I shall be with you in 14 days, although I fear our cause will not remain uncondemned. 
efforts are being made towards this end, they will have difficulty in forcing the monks and nuns to return to the cloister. I am forever reminded that you are running the enterprise for the family we have made together. It is not my absence that puts you in this role, but your faithfulness in this role that makes it possible for me to be present here in service to Christ our Lord and his beloved church. Pray for Philip. His health is suffering much. I herewith commit you to God. Amen. To Martin Luther, absentee undersecretary and poet, it is so nice to hear from you. Without such letters, I may forget the sound of your voice and the likeness of your appearance. <coughs> this day thy two dear sons have been brought home with reports of mischief having occurred in their near presence. While they are free from convictions before the prince's judiciary, they are all but confessed of their sins to me. Martin, if it were within my powers, I would send to you a warrant for your return home and a sentencing that you actually be father to those who are your issue. I am mother to our children and too many more entrusted to us. These also are yours to care for. You must return home for several weeks, if not a month or more. Fatherless children are growing up and you will not be able to return home early enough if you have missed their adolescent years. My love for you grows stronger, and of your love I have no reason to doubt. Forgive my brashness, but honor our home and family with your presence again. Make haste and come home to your family, and know that words cannot tell of my longing and our children's longing for you to be with us again. Thy wife in waiting, lover and mother to thy children, Katie. To my dearly beloved housewife Catherine, my sweetheart and owner of Zolfdorf Sow Market, grace and peace in Christ, and my old poor weak love to thee. Dear Katie, I became extremely weak near Eiselden. But it was my own fault. Such a cold wind blew through the cap of my head that it was likely to turn my brain to ice. This may have caused my vertigo to get worse, but now I thank God I am so well. Philip too is now recovered. It was as if he had truly been dead, and really, like Lazarus, has risen from death. Thy sons Mansfield, the day before yesterday, as Hans seemed determined to have them with him there. I do not know what they are about. If it is cold, they may help us. But now that it is mild, they must do or suffer what they will. Herewith I commend you and all at home to God. Greet all the orders. God, our dear Father, listens to our prayers. The lover who has grown old, Martin. Martin in exile. You have been the dog, the devil. You are a great scholar and spiritual warrior. How could you be old? I admit I have seen changes over the years, but I have believed these are only God's improvements. I will come to your side if you bid me. Our children are well able to look after the needs of our home. Thy servant girl and handmaiden, Katie. To the deeply learned lady, Catherine, my gracious consort at Wittenberg, grace and peace. We sit here at martyrdom, longing to be away. I asked Philip to correct his exposition. He does not seem to understand why the Lord calls riches thorns. But it is disagreeable to me that the thorns should be threatened with fire in the scriptures. The children and I have much to eat, 
and we would be having a good time if this business were over. I long to be with you again, and I want you to know that I would not exchange you, my lovely Katie, for lands or gold coin. Amen. Pray for us. Mark. To my Martin, who holds my heart in his kind and gentle hands, it is good to know our children are at your side and also in pursuit of their own interests. Will we not know the outcome of the Reformation as was founded on the Apostles and Prophets? Philip and Elizabeth send their love. The household prays daily for its master, and my worrisome heart intercedes constantly. Thy Katie, awaiting your return by day and by night, my Lord and Master Kinsman. my dear wife, doctoress and self-tormentor, my gracious lady, grace and peace. Please read St. John and the Catechism of which you once said, this book tells all about me. You afflict yourself as if God isn't all-powerful and able to rise up many Luthers, should I perish. <clears throat> I have a better protector than you and all the angels. It is he who lay in the manger and fondled on a maiden's breast, but was at the same time seated at the right hand of the Almighty Father. Therefore, tranquilize yourself with this, and be at rest about it. Amen. Humble as I am. Mark. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther, Professor, Defender of the Faith, Absent Landlord, and Circuit Priest. Martin, my heart and mind grow weary over being anxious for you. You are at the mercy of those princes who rule in the lands you traverse. <coughs> Leave these greater demands of traveling to younger men who you have instructed and travel only to those most weighty gatherings. Besides, there are road bandits who care nothing about title or reputation and will take a life for a mere coin. I was unable to sleep a second night for fear of the many fates that could overcome you. I keep my fears from our children, but I am unable to keep them from myself. Please send word and take all cautions for the sake of your family, my beloved. Your Katie and sleeping children. Katie. To the saintly, anxious Catherine, owner of Zolsdorf at Wittenberg, my gracious dear wife. Your care kept me awake. Because of your anxiety, I was nearly consumed by a fire in our end. Just outside my door, on account of your anxiety, a stone fell upon our heads and almost crushed us. In my room, mortar came down for two days in chunks as large as pillows. Pray, leaving it to God, as he has promised. Cast thy burden on the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. <coughs> Dearest Kate, take time to relax from your anxious preoccupations, for they serve no useful purpose. <coughs> Dr. Jonas has a sore leg. He knocked it on the chest. It is bad. Holes are now appearing in his skin. Amen. 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 Your obedient servant, Mark. My Martin, husband, lover, father of our children, and keeper of my heart. These weary years of ministry, at home and away, have been made favorable by Christ our Lord. I would not have chosen another if all the world of men were paraded before me as would be quarters. To know the well-being of the church is being restored, and you are preserved, brings me tranquility. 
Martin, to be at your side is my greatest fulfillment, and to be yours in life, my highest joy. As always, your absence is allowed, <coughs> but only for the reason that I am outraged by our higher authority, our Lord Savior Jesus. Thy loving servant and wife. February 14, 1546. I am very well, dear Kate, as God has helped. You may show this to Bill Philip and Dr. Kruseger. It is reported here that Dr. Martin has been snatched away by the devil. The report comes from Magdeburg. It is the invention of these wiseacres, your countrymen. Some declare that the emperor is 30 miles from here in Westphalia. We hope for treaties of peace and agreements for the practices of the faith and church. Others say that the French are enlisting recruits. But let us sing that we shall wait and see what God will do. I commend you to God, Martin. Four days after writing this letter to my Katie, God called me home to be with him in heaven. I was no longer afraid to die, having fought the good faith, good fight of faith. I had every assurance of my salvation and the complete forgiveness of my every sin, by faith alone. Amen. <laughs> 